Hey guys, welcome back to Lucas. This is part three of the top-down shooter tutorial. Um, in this one, we're gonna create the door and the animation that goes with it. We'll program it later to work, but you'll be able to see that animation functioning now. Um, I tried doing this in Blender so many times and had such difficulty, brought it into Godot and was able to do it within two minutes. So I'm not saying that Godot is, you know, the best place to animate things, but in terms of what I was trying to do, just this simple keyframe animation, Godot made it so easy. So I'm not getting paid to say that, by the way, not yet. And here we go, door1.gltf. I don't want to make a new scene or anything. I'm just going to double click on this and it says, since door one was, or scene door one was automatically imported, it can't be modified. But to make changes, we can create a new inherited scene. So what that means is I'm gonna click new inherited. We can't, if we open anyway, we can't modify it. We can't add anything to it or anything. So we're gonna create a new inherited scene. What that does is create a new scene called door one in this case. Um, and it shows me the meshes underneath that, but we can actually modify this and this here has imported the stuff from this. So I'm gonna click plus and we're gonna add an animation player. Animation player. Making sure that I add it to the door one node, not cube or cube 04 here. Okay, and this animation player down the bottom, it shows up, it's pretty easy. And I click on animation and I'm gonna click new. This is gonna be called open door. I'll click okay. Now I'm gonna make it take about half a second to open this door, but I need to add these tracks here. So I'm gonna add a 3D transform track. I'm gonna add one for cube four, and I'm gonna add one for cube 05. So the two different components in here, that one and that one. You see, I can move them around, edit them, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna add those in there. Now, right at the start, I'm gonna keyframe their positions. So I'm gonna right click on the little tracking bit down here and keyframe them. That means that at zero seconds, or zero, the, the start of the animation, this is where the door should be. I'm gonna move the um, slider, what do you call this, like the, the thing, you know, the thing that goes up and down. I'm gonna move that along to 0.5. If you wanna make the animation longer, move it along further, but I'm gonna move along to 0.5. Then I'm gonna click on this, move it out one unit, click on this, move it out one unit, and then I'm gonna right click on each one and insert a key. Now I can play this animation, it's really easy. I'll just take this slider back to the start, hit play, boom, doors are open, nice. Now we're gonna create, I'm gonna go back to here, click on animation, new, and I'm gonna call it close door. Now the reason I put it at 0.5 was because that's where I want it to be in the new animation. If, you, if your doors are closed here, you'll want to open them up and then uh, do it. So I'm going to add the tracks again. 3D transformation for that one. 3D transformation for that one. And keyframe them both. You can move these keyframes along as well if you happen to accidentally put it in the wrong place. I'm going to move that along to here. Then I'm going to close the doors. Boom. Boom. Insert key insert key. What a keyframe does is it says at this point in time, be here. The computer will fill in everything else in between. Um, so there we go. We've got closed door animation. So I've got play door animation and closed door animation. Now I'm going to save this node here as door1.tscn. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm actually going to give it a better name, door1 uh, with animation.tscn. Okay, because then we can call some. We can have another scene called Door One, which has different components on it, which we're going to add now. So, new scene, and I'm just going to have a look at my other model just to see how I actually did this last time. Um, so, door. Yeah, this is just going to be a 3D scene here. I'm going to call it Door One, and we're going to add in from our scenes Door One with animation. It's going to go into there. So we've got door one with animation. Um, I'm gonna add a floor. I'm gonna add two floor panels, one and two. Now these floor panels, one's gonna move that way, one's gonna move that way, and the door is gonna sit between them. Uh, the reason for that, I'm just gonna say this is door one, is if I go back to here, if you remember this, I'll just, room one, um, whoops. 
quickly show you what I mean. Scenes, room one. You probably get the gist already, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, the gaps between the doors are kind of two units wide. So what I want is a door that sits in the middle of them like this right there okay so the door sits in there like that so that looks pretty good okay otherwise if I just do it on a single one we have two doors like I had in my introductory video so I don't want that now let's go back to door one we've got floor panel one floor panel two they already have colliders on them because that's how we set it up and we do need to have some extra stuff in here. First of all, we need a, um, a door blocker, which is gonna be a collision, uh, sorry, a static body. So let's go static body. I'll make sure it's on door node and I'm gonna call it door blocker. It's important to name these things because in code, I'm gonna be referring to these specifically. So if you're not naming them, you're gonna to have to come back and figure out what on earth did I call it. It's probably gonna be static body. Uh, and then for this, I'm gonna add a collision body, collision shape. And this is going to be a new box shape. I'm gonna move it to here. I'm gonna scale it in, hold shift as I scale it in and then up. Okay, so that's gonna be my box shape for that. Or I might actually scale it up all the way which is five down here, and then pull it up. So it takes up the whole thing. Just in case we, later on we do something where maybe you can lob a grenade or whatever, we don't want it going through that uh, door. Okay, so that's the collision shape for the door blocker. But I need a way to determine when the player approaches the door. Okay, and what we're gonna use for that is an area node. So area here. And an area works a little bit like a static body, except it doesn't block it, it detects something within the area. So when I say it works like it, I mean it needs a collision shape as well. And I'm gonna use a new box shape for that, but I'm gonna turn it up quite a bit. Okay, we'll turn it up like, like that. I'm gonna bring it up. Okay, so when the player enters this corridor from either side, we're going to make it play that animation like so. Now, that is pretty much all we need here. I'm gonna save that. And we've got everything kind of sorted, I think. We've got the area, we've got the collision shape, stopping them actually walking through the door uh, or shooting through the door. Um, if, it's, if it's closed, we won't let enemies through it because you know the enemies, they don't have the automatic ID scanner that the player has, so it won't open for them. Um, we could make it open for them, uh, and that's just a matter of not detecting which uh, player or which model enters this here. We could just say, as soon as any model enters it, open the door. Um, that might get funny for the player later on if they're trying to outrun some enemies from room to room. But we've got that node done there. So from here, someone could start building levels. You know, in your team, someone could start building some levels up. Um, you can always make modifications to these scenes and they will update. Sometimes you may need to close the scene down and reopen it for it to update again. Um, but you can start building different scenes, uh, make different doors. You can duplicate a scene, by the way. I'm pretty sure you can, yeah. You can duplicate a scene and you could make changes to it. So you could delete uh, door one model here and add in door two. Um, have I added door? Oh, okay, so the reason this says door one instead of door one with animation is because if I click on this, remember this is door one with animation, but it always takes on the name of that. So I might actually call this door one with animation. And now sometimes this is this is the one thing that I haven't figured out in Godot yet. I'm not sure if there is a way to do it or if I'm just doing something wrong. But uh, if I go back to, don't say, if I go back to here, that hasn't updated. The name hasn't updated. Even if I load it again, it hasn't updated. I would have to delete that door node and add it back in. 
in which case it's now called door one with animation. The door block is still there. Uh, everything is the same as it was. But yeah, that's all good now. Cool. That's the end of the video. Next video, we'll start looking at programming um, and setting up the character controller.